For it seems now more certain than ever that the bloody experience of Vietnam is to end in a stalemate. But it is increasingly clear to this reporter that the only rational way out then will be to negotiate, not as victors, but as an honorable people who lived up to their pledge to defend democracy and did the best they could. I am announcing today my candidacy for the presidency of the United States. I do not run for the presidency merely to oppose any man, but to propose new policies. So I, you know, it just seems to me what is required in the United States is, is not what Vice President Humphrey has said, which is the politics of joy and the politics of happiness, but the politics of reality, of what the problems are in the country. I mean, it's all fine that we have uh, all of these. Thank you. You come with me. <laughs> January 1968, the Tet Offensive. Suddenly, the enemy finds new strength to strike, denying all American tales of progress. Vietnam is right by battle. Saigon is scorched. United States bombers continued their raids against the North. Our military called the attacks necessary, but Hanoi said that no peace talks could begin until the bombing stopped. Small coast capital city of Rabat. Crowds estimated at over a million jammed the route of the funeral procession of King Mohammed V. His son and heir, King Hassan, and Tunisian President Bourguiba helped carry the beer. When finally Vice Premier Key had to go on the air to announce a general curfew throughout the city and the imposition of martial law, he had to do it on the American Armed Forces radio station because his own Saigon radio station had been blown to pieces. We have ordered our aircraft and our naval vessels to make no attacks on North Vietnam except in the area north of the demilitarized zone where the continuing enemy buildup directly threatens Allied forward positions. The North Vietnamese would talk, Gabriel Harriman. With Marshall. But now in March, his generals report they need 200,000 more men in Vietnam. These troops he sends to war are fellow citizens. Their warm and precious lives pledge to a cause that many of their countrymen wish to yield. Courage to persist is of the essence of a leader. Courage to stop sometimes takes greater will. For the eighth day in a row, fighting continues here in the Cholan district. Now, since the communist offensive, almost every city and town in South Vietnam is cut off from the others. President Thieu of South Vietnam said today that anyone who advocates a coalition government for his nation is a traitor. Sw that it will give North Vietnam a total of $45 million in aid and long-term credits. The minority chants its protest. I say that when respect for the United States, respect for the United States has fallen all over the world. But when it has fallen so low that a fourth-rate military power will hijack an American naval vessel in international waters, then it's time for new leadership for the American people at home. And we should provide. Ten, nine, we have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit. We have. We have liftoff. Liftoff at 7:51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have cleared the top.
radar clear, 13 seconds. Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, over. Hello, Apollo 8. Loud and clear. Roger. Please get informed there is a Santa Claus. That's affirmative. You're the best one to know. As Borman, Lovell, and Anders stepped onto the carrier deck, a huge and patriotic celebration broke loose in mission control. A celebration echoed by the hundreds of thousands of men and women who were Apollo 8. step on the moon. What do you think of it? I can't believe in how short, just eight years, how long we just made as we beat the Russians and everything. I can't believe it, that it just happened, and we can see it in our lifetime, and how much that we'll probably see, you know, without my whole lifetime, more. Nowhere is the grotesque nature of this year's politics more vivid than in Washington. For the first time since the Civil War, soldiers must defend the Capitol. Machine guns turned upon Americans whose laws no longer bind. country and it's the most wonderful feeling anyone could ever have the tragic news from Czechoslovakia shocks the conscience of the world the Soviet Union and its allies have invaded a defenseless country to stamp out a resurgence of ordinary human freedom it is a sad commentary on the communist mind that a sign of liberty in Czechoslovakia is deemed a fundamental threat to the security of the Soviet system. The excuse. Nejsilnější jsou u předsednictva vlády, které bylo obsazeno nejprve. Násilím byl odsud vyvlečen premiér Černý. Byla rozmístěna v parcích, míří i na Pražský hrad. Tam v těchto chvílích byl prezident republiky Ludvík Svoboda, který zhruba před 25 lety bojoval v Čechách. I když už po druhé hodině noční, například ředitele spojů Hoffmana, byly vypnuty vysílače. Později se však statečným spojařům podařilo spojení znovu navázat a rozhlas mohl vysílat dál zprávy o napadení Československa. I shall not see. And I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Nixon chooses Chicago to open his assault on Humphrey in September. There, where only one week earlier streets and parks were battleground, the Republican draws 400,000 people. A triumphal first week carries him from Chicago to San Francisco and back across the land. Buoyant, Wherever he campaigns, he underscores his message. The nerve center for is It's been transformed by radio antennas, bunkers, and barbed wire into the joint U.S. Vietnamese command post. 
On the airstrip at Lafang, tons of artillery and ammunition are loaded and moved out to forward fire bases. The objective? To hit the enemy anywhere between Da Nang and the DMZ and west into Laos again if necessary. The Marines and Airborne advance into the communist line. Target prior to the attack, allowing the populace a chance to escape. American youth today has its fringes, but that's part of the greatness of our country. I have great faith in American youth. The youth of today can change the world, and if they understand that, I think that we're going to go forward to a great age, not just for Americans but for peace and progress for all the people in the world. <laughs> this game depends, however, on his unwritten alliance with Reagan. Announcing open candidacy, Reagan now speeds from caucus to caucus. If Reagan can persuade his southern friends to break their prior pledges to Nixon, the convention will come apart. National Aeronautics and Space Administration presents Aeronautics and Space Report. At Christmas time, the crew of the USS Pueblo returned home after nearly a year of captivity in North Korea. Booker and his crew were met by relatives in San Diego. After a tearful reunion, the men unfolded a tale of torture at the hands of the communists bent on extracting confessions. Weeks of probing lay ahead, but for the Pueblo crew, it was a time for rejoicing and sorrow. Grief for the one ship... Astronauts Neil A. Armstrong, Edwin E. Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the three men who will make the next and most historic round trip to the moon. The men rose early, ate breakfast, and dressed in their spacesuits. They must work in a weightless environment, keeping their spacecraft and themselves in good condition. Data must be collected and reported. Experiments must be performed, including photography both inside and outside the spacecraft. Because of the film speed, these actions appear faster than they actually were. In Vietnam, Viet Cong rockets hit Saigon during the night for the first time in two and a half weeks, killing two civilians and wounding 25. The new communist campaign in Vietnam continues. 
Just after midnight their time, a band of Viet Cong raiders blew up a power installation and attacked two police stations in Saigon. Other small bands still roam the city. Hamburger Hill was the biggest engagement so far in Operation Apache Snow started three weeks ago. The objective of the operation was not the hill, but control of the Asha, the main infiltration route threatening northern coastal cities. After the 101st Airborne Division troopers wrested Hamburger Hill from the enemy, there was a pause in the fighting. The big guns were cleaned. The 10-day offensive against the dug-in enemy cost 55 American lives and 300 wounded. Enemy losses are put at 400. President Nixon's interest is in getting the U.S. out of the war in some acceptable way, whereas President II's interest is in seeing his own government survive the end of the war. In North Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh died. He had led his communist forces through three decades of warfare. After defeating the French, he fought the U.S. and her allies for nine years. I believe we must take risks for peace, but calculated risks not foolish risks. We shall not trade our defenses for a disarming smile or charming words. We are prepared for new initiatives in the control of arms in the context of other specific moves to reduce tensions around the world. I believe that America is not going to become a garrison state or a welfare state or a police state simply because the American people will defend our values from those forces, external or internal, that we challenge or erode. The moment you mention nuclear weapons today, a lot of people get jittery and they seem to don't even want to discuss it. Nuclear weapons are a deterrent to war. We ought to remain the strongest nuclear power in the world. And we won't use any weapons unless we have to. But we will use any weapons, if necessary, to protect America and her people. More than 350,000 people, mostly young people, showed up to hear the greatest rock groups in the country. The promoters billed it as three days of peace and music. And for most people, it was just that. Little thanks to the promoters. There were many problems. Like not enough sanitation facilities, food, or water. Good morning. It'll be two or three days before all the people leave the peace and quiet of the Catskill Mountains. It may be longer before this area returns to normal. Despite the problems, and there were many problems, though they were not... Tablets or liquid? Astronauts Collins, Aldrin, and Armstrong came out of their sealed quarantine tank last night and today had their first day at home in peace. But it will not last long. The schedule in front of them is in some ways more arduous than their trip to the moon. <laughs> 